Hi guys! Welcome or welcome back to my channel. I'm Marie and I make clothes. So for today's video, I will be showing you how I made this simple linen tank. This is one of those pieces that I see myself wearing on a daily basis and I believe everyone should have this in their wardrobe. So this top features flat felt seam and bias binding to finish the seam. I personally don't have a serger, but I always make sure that my makes have a clean finish. If you are a beginner, I recommend this to be your first project as this will be a great way to practice. And if you are an advanced sewist, this is your reminder to make yourself some easy and simple tops. I actually made two tops as you can see, and the white is the original version. And for the black, I just shortened the shoulder and I dropped the neckline a little bit. I will probably make this into a series where once a month, I will throw in a simple but wearable garment with a sew along. So this is episode one, the simple linen tank. So the pattern I used is the Phoebe linen tank from fabricstory.com. Of course, it's free and I will link it down below the description. My size is four or six, which is small, but the pattern goes up to 28 or 30 or 4XL. The fabric I used is the linen rayon from Shopee, which is linked down below. But you could also use fabrics like georgette, silk, viscose, or cotton. If fabricstore.com is available in your area, check out their linen fabrics because for sure this is perfect for this. And as a support as well, since they are kind enough to share a lot of free sewing patterns on their website. I used about one meter, but there's a lot extra left. So this is a good project if you have some fabric scraps. This channel is mainly about me making clothes using free patterns and fabric from the thrift stores. So if you're interested in that, please subscribe, like the video so you can easily find it in your playlist if you want to recreate it. And I will really appreciate if you comment down any suggestions or what you like or don't like about my videos so I could improve as well. You should, by the way, watch my first video since I showed there clothes that I made using seven free sewing patterns so you could get info for your next sneak. With that being said, let's start. I will start with a pattern and alteration. If this is your first time using or downloading a pattern, I have linked a tutorial on the description for your reference. Make sure to watch that first since it will show you how to print and assemble the pattern properly. We only have two piece pattern for this, the front and back. For the front, no changes. This should be cut on fold. And for the back, the only change I did on the back piece is adding one centimeter on the side and one centimeter on the shoulder. That is because I will be using a flat fell seam method to finish the seams. This should be cut on fold. Since I will be using a bias binding to finish the neckline and armholes, I'm showing you here how I make a bias tape. You just need to cut a fabric on a 45 degree angle. I first find the angle, then I draw a straight line. From that line, I will measure 4 cm apart. We need 3 pieces, 2 for the shoulder and 1 for the neckline. For the length, you can measure the pattern shoulder, then multiply by 2 since it's on fold. For me, that is around 45 cm. Then for the neckline, add the front and back. For me, that is around 60 cm. By the way, I'm using here an erasable pen that will disappear when you wash it. Of course, you can just buy a pre-made bias tape, but I like using the same fabric because I think it looks better. After cutting the bias strip, I will make it into a bias tape. I usually use my bias tape maker tool to do this where I just simply insert it in the tool. It's easier if the fabric is cut on an angle, then press it with my iron while pulling the tool. If you don't have this tool, here is a clip of me showing you how to manually do it. I just fold the bias strip in half, then iron, 
I will open the folded strip, then use the crease in the middle as a guide to fold again, then iron. Once done with one side, I will do the same to the other side. This method is a bit tedious, so consider investing on this bias tape maker. It's very cheap and worth it. It usually comes in three sizes. Now we are done preparing the fabric pieces. Before we start sewing, let's review the pattern pieces. One piece back, cut on fold. One piece front, cut on fold. And three piece bias tape. With all that complete, let's start sewing. I first grab the back piece, then sew a straight line, 1 cm from the edge on the side seam and shoulder. This will be a guide later. Attaching the front and back piece together. With right sides together, pin the front piece to the back piece. Make sure that the front piece edge is aligned with the straight line that we sewed earlier as a guide meaning the front piece edge is pinned 1 cm below the back piece edge. Do this on the shoulder and the side seams. Once everything is pinned, sew 1 cm from the edge of the top front piece or 2 cm from the edge of the back piece. Here I'm showing you that the front and back piece is now attached on the shoulder and on the side. Now fold the excess on the back piece to the front, then pin. Again, do this on the shoulder and the side. After pinning, sew about 5 mm from the edge. After sewing that, we will iron the seams towards the front piece. Making sure that the raw edge is covered, do this on the shoulder and sides. As you can see, I always double check before ironing that the raw edge is covered. Make sure to do the same. Now that all seams are pressed towards the front piece, we will bring this to the machine and sew 5mm from the edge or 8mm as long as you are catching the seams that we pressed and as a result, fully encasing the raw edge. A 
again do this on the shoulder and sides Now we are done attaching the front and back piece together and we finish the seams using the flat fell seam method. Let's move on to the neckline and armholes. Here I'm trimming down the excess on the neckline, then I stay stitch both the neckline and armholes. Which is basically just sewing a straight stitch 5mm from the edge. This is to ensure that the neckline and armholes does not stretch. Now I will flip this so that the back right side is facing up. As I said earlier, we will be doing a bias binding for both. I will start pinning the bias tape on the right side starting from the back. Open the bias tape, then fold the raw edge on the start of the bias tape, then pin. Make sure to align the edge of the neckline and the bias tape. Do not stretch the bias tape when pinning. overlap one centimeter on the folded start of the bias tape earlier after pinning so one centimeter from the edge start stitching at the back on the overlap part of the bias tape you can use the crease on the bias tape as a guide go slow when stitching Pull out the pins as you go, then make sure that your needle is down when you pause to pull out the pin. On this clip, I'm done sewing the bias tape and I'm just trimming the excess on the 1 cm overlap. Then I'm pressing the bias tape towards the neckline. Just be careful not to iron the fold on the bias tape since that will be important to make it easier later. After pressing, fold the bias tape encasing the raw edge of the neckline. Then pin. I like to pin on the right side and I just make sure that I'm catching the folded edge on the other side. Here I'm just showing you that I stitched the overlapping bias tape first which made it easier to fold it. Once everything is pinned, edge stitch the bias tape by a hairline or 1 to 2 millimeter from the edge. Go slow on this part and make sure that you are catching the bias tape on the other side. Pull out the pins as you go, then make sure that your needle is down when you pause to pull out the pins. Again, 
take your time on this part because the end result will be satisfying. Now here's the finished neckline, so neat. I'll admire this for a few seconds, then we will proceed with the armholes. We will start again on the back, one centimeter above the side seam. Open the bias tape, then pin the bias tape on the right side. Unlike the neckline earlier, do not fold the start of the bias tape. I will show you another way to connect the bias tape. Once the ends meet, pin the bias tape together and mark, then draw a straight line. Sew a straight stitch using the straight line as a guide. sewing cut the excess then pin the seam of the bias tape on one side now sew the bias tape on the armhole with one centimeter from the edge again you can use the crease on the bias tape as a guide now that you know both options, decide what you want to use and comment down what you prefer. I'm curious. Here I'm showing you a trick that I use on how to reduce the bulkiness when folding a few layers of fabric. First, I don't align the side seam with the bias seam. Second, I clip on the middle of the bias tape, basically on the fold line. Be careful not to clip through the stitches. Then I will fold the other seam allowance on the opposite side. That's it. A small clip will help distribute the bulk. Pin and sew just like what we did on the neckline. Do this on both armholes.
am showing you here a clip of the finished armholes and neckline so we can appreciate it together. We are almost done. Let's move on to the hem. I'm just cutting the excess on the hem. I don't know why I had to use a ruler here, but feel free not to. Oh, another trick when doing hems is I like to draw 2 cm from the edge on the wrong side of the fabric. Then I use that as a guide when folding the hem. So fold, then iron, then fold again. I think that it's faster this way. The last step is to stitch the hem. Just edge stitch by a hairline on the fold line. And that's it. Our simple tank top is done. I'm so happy with this make. I hope you are as well. I probably can make a hundred of it and for sure wear it a lot. This is actually a great gift idea. Is the finished simple but very wearable linen tank. It's light, breezy, relaxed, and sure to keep you cool all season. You can dress this up or down. 100% of versatile and essential staple for every wardrobe. It's very hackable as well which is what I always look for in a pattern. You can change up the neckline, shorten the shoulder, or even make this into a dress. This tutorial is longer than what I was expecting, but that is because I want to show you some hacks and I want you to learn and master the basic techniques in sewing so that when you work on a much more complicated garment, it's not as overwhelming. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe so I can continue to fill my makes. I have a goal this year to make all of my clothes using free sewing patterns. I look forward to share those makes with you, so expect more to come. I hope this video helped you gain the confidence to make your own clothes. I tried my best to make it as simple as possible. Have the best rest of your day, and remember to love yourself. See you next week. Bye!